Hey guys, welcome back to the arena. So this is day nine of my um, attempt here to climb to rank one mythic. And there were a couple days off here just for doing the qualifier, uh, the standard qualifier last weekend, and then just doing a little bit of introduction for um, <clears throat> the new set. But yeah, thank you so much for stopping by. Um, if you're new to my channel, Thank you so much for being here. And if you do like my content, please consider subscribing, maybe sharing it with a friend. Um, for returning viewers, thank you guys so much for coming back and supporting. You guys do really mean the world to me and you're the backbone of the channel. So thank you guys so much. In addition, there are um, deck lists in the description and also a playlist. So if you wanna see previous videos, feel free to check that out. I should also have deck lists both at moxfield.com and untap.gg in the description. And then there are some big changes here for the deck. Um, but before we get into that, just want to give a couple, I uh, just want to give a shout out again. Um, so my first subscriber or my first member um, of my channel uh, is Kibo. And thank you so much again. Your membership really is a great way to help the channel. So if you guys are considering supporting the channel, memberships are a great way to do it. If you would like to become a member and help support my channel, you can do so. Just click on the join button right next to where it says subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Um, or if you would like to just support my channel just on a one-time basis, you can also click the super thanks button uh, here right on the, uh, also right under the banner here for the video. So these are both great ways to support the channel. I really appreciate you guys and I couldn't do this without you. So thank you guys so much again for your consideration. All right, let's get into some games. Uh, let's go ahead and dive in. So some big changes here. After doing a lot of best of three, I'm really happy to be doing best of one again. <clears throat> best of one is just kind of, it's so much more my style. I really I prefer it really greatly over best of three. Um, I did leave a best of three sideboard, so it has changed quite a bit over the last couple days. And I think that just kind of use it as a starting point. Um, you know, Feel free to kind of monkey with it and change it as you see fit, but it's just kind of meant like as a sort of a jumping off point. <clears throat> For the main deck, I did a pretty big swap. So I took out all of the Warden of the Inner Sky and also all of the um, Novice Inspectors, which is a pretty big move. I think that they go very well together. And, you know, Novice Inspector, I think, really shines the most in Boros Convoke. But because we're not quite as wide as they are, we can't quite take as much advantage of it. It's still a great card, but I want to be as aggressive as possible since our best line is really one drop, two drop Adeline. And <clears throat> I think that Recruitment Officer also pairs really well with Brutal Cathar just because it gives you something to do when you have a turn off and are waiting for the Brutal Cathar to flip. In addition, it has two power on turn one. Um, that coupled with the utility a little bit late game really makes it sort of another consideration. And so I decided to replace them with four copies of <clears throat> the recruitment officer and then also three copies of hopeful initiate. With more creatures here that are able to turn on the initiate, I think it's really a great choice. It helps to deal with problem cards uh, like temporary lockdown and also just a little bit more aggressive if you're not spending turns tapping out and convoking um you know or just tapping down for warden so i think it's going to be a nice addition <clears throat> the rest of the deck is the same um, except i did up the brutal cathar count up to three so i think having three main deck really is nice just having more removal just feels like i want to have just more answers and Brutal Cathar is one of the best options for that i still wanted to keep the three drop slot not too high so we're up to you know, functionally 11 three drops here with the Knight Errant, Adeline, and Brutal Cathar. And then I decided that I wanted a full play set of Marcho Otherworldly Light. This card is just, <clears throat> it is just so good. It's so versatile. It can deal with almost anything. And it is amazing against Boris Convoke. And I, I actually, I kind of think it's a necessity if you're going to be doing mono white, since you don't have access to end the festivities like you do in red, um, you need something to check their power. And March is definitely a great answer for it. Um, the other change is I went up to 22 sources for lands. So I upped the Mishra's Foundry count back up to four and then <clears throat> I 
having the extra land, you know, really, I think, makes that kind of a proposition. I, I think you want to have access to 18 sources of your mana. And so we basically have that between the four Ganges, the 10 planes, and the four cavernous souls, since everything in here is a human. <clears throat> and then with 22 sources, that gives us kind of four extra slots that we can use for the Mishra's foundries. And they are much better the more of them that you have. So I feel pretty good about that change. Part of the reason for the 22 lands was I just wanted to be able to reliably hit Adeline on three um, or Brutal Cathar if I need it. And then it also kind of plays well with Intrepid Adversary, Recruitment Officer, March of Otherworldly Life. There's just a lot of stuff that it does. I shaved one Thalia. I did have a couple games where I just had like three or four copies in my hand and it was just kind of too much. So I think Thalia maybe at three is probably right. Um, you know, I still think that you want four Adeline all the time because this card is just totally insane all the time. So yeah, that feels right. Let's go ahead and jump into some games. We are about halfway through Diamond 1, so it's been a little bit of a slow journey, but it's been fun. And yeah, I think that we have hopefully what it takes to break into Mythic now. It was a lot of fun doing the best of three uh, content to kind of get ready for the standard qualifier. Um, <clears throat> if you haven't watched that video, I won't spoil it, but um, suffice to say that I have some, some things to learn there for best of three. So I think it's a very, very different animal. And I feel so much better just coming back to best of one. Uh, this hand is amazing. Let's go ahead and keep. And then I think here we're just going to lead out with initiate just because we have the nice one, two, three combo here. So. If I had like three one drops, I would go out with uh, officer instead because then I could go like initiate plus something else next turn. But now we can just go Thalia and then just push. So we could be up against Mono White here, although this is also quite possibly Boros. Either way, I'm happy to get Thalia going, just in case they have something like um, Novice Inspector into Gleeful Demolition, which I don't want to have happen. Yeah, and they are, they are Boros here, so that makes sense. Sometimes they try to get a little bit sneaky about playing their Gleeful Demolition. All right, having access to March is really great. Um, because it's going to cost two for Gleeful Demolition, it's still going to be a little tough for them to do it. It doesn't mean it's impossible. We could hold up two and just push with like Officer, but I think Adeline is so good that we just want to get that going. And if they want to double block Thalia, I'm happy to make the trade with Warden. I don't think they will, though. Most likely, they're just going to try to, like, set up, like, Knight Errant on their turn or something like that. Yeah, and there's the Knight Errant. And this is nice, too, because now we can, um, I think, yeah, we have enough mana here to march their Knight Errant, which feels pretty good. We can also just go Intrepid Adversary here, too, and that actually will allow us to push with both Adeline and Hopeful Initiate, so I think that's a little bit better. Now they're in a pretty tough spot, especially with us having access to March.
And if they try to go big on Warden, we can just use March. So with the Thalia tax, um, I guess we could keep like Officer in hand and then we could play out Sun Gold Sentinel. And potentially march for three. Or I guess march for two is all we would need. So we could also try to use it to get rid of Knight Errant by sacrificing Officer and then just pushing for a decent amount. Um, but I think just using this, like if they try to double block, is a little bit better. So let's just go ahead and attack with our Adeline and Hopeful Initiate and see what they do. Hopefully we can set up some awkward blocks here. Okay, this is nice. So now we can march for zero and just get rid of their token. And that feels pretty good. Let's see, actually, I wanna tap my mana. Now we can get Sun Gold Sentinel going. So yeah, we've got a whole bunch of different axes here to kind of push through the last couple points. But yeah, March is just such an awesome card in this deck. Super happy with it. I do feel pretty good about the the creature swap just because I feel like um, if you're going to go Warden of the Inner Sky, you kind of almost want to have even more one drops so that you're able to really kind of go off on turn two sort of regardless. And the way that this deck has just been kind of filling out is sort of more like 11 one drops, 12 two drops, 11 three drops, then you've got your marches. So... Feels a little bit more natural to leave the Warden out of this build. All right, let's just set up a Thalia. Just to give ourselves a little bit of a buffer here if they have removal for Adeline just to make it a little bit more expensive <clears throat> and then I think we just want to set up with Adeline here like we could go veteran plus sentinel but like we're a decently high life total, and just getting this thing going feels pretty good. <clears throat> and then, yeah, we're never blocking here. Because um, they could certainly have, like, Play With Fire or Monstrous Rage. And it's nice because we know that they don't have uh, Witch Stalker Frenzy, since they would have played it if they did, and just attacked with the etching of kumano so that's kind of nice we've got them nailed down to either another play with fire or um monstrous rage here
And this is actually nice, because now that we got them to commit the Monstrous Rage to Feldon, we can just go ahead and Brutal Cathar, which feels pretty good. Um, and I think we want to get a lot of stuff out of our hands, so it's fine to play the Aganjo here just to get that plus veteran going. Even if they spend time killing our Brutal Cathar here, I think it's okay. They had to play with fire, but that's fine. This is an interesting attack. Um, they haven't played a land yet, so... Actually, wait a second. Did they play the... I think they just played the Foundry. Never mind. So I think we're okay blocking here for Feldon. We do give them something, but we're also kind of protecting our life total, which I think is a good move. So let's do that. Okay, they do have the Witch Doctor Frenzy. We can at least make it a little bit more expensive by playing Vanguard here. And yeah, I think we just want another veteran. Although I suppose we're at 13, so we're not taking a ton of damage. Maybe it's better to just get like Sun Gold Sentinel plus um, Vanguard going. It's a little bit less life, but I think it's actually okay. Yeah, that's going to do it. All right, one win away from Mythic. Opening hand looks great. Got nice um, things to do here for a couple turns. I also do think that running 22 land makes the adversary considerably better. It just, um, it's nice to have that ability to kind of pump up late game. And then here we're playing the, the planes first, just so in case they hold up mana next turn, we can have Cavern of Souls ready to kind of invalidate their turn. Yeah. So now, like, they're expecting to be able to counter, and we're just going to say, no, you can't do that. Um, I think we could do Copper Coat here, but I kind of want to get uh, Sun Gold Sentinel going. So I think let's just do that instead. Given that, I suppose we should just attack first. The other consideration here is we could go for adversary, which wouldn't be wrong. Um, and it, there's actually, I suppose, a consideration that might be better, but I think that since we've got the Sentinel... It's pretty good also. We do already have three lands, so adversary could be good on four. But I, I certainly like wouldn't blame you to play adversary on two just to kind of make sure that our life total is high enough since they're going to be going for um, the djinn. All right, let's start with veteran, see if they want to counter it. We'll give them that option.
Sentinel's gonna be pretty nice though. Like taking apart their graveyard is actually really powerful against this deck. Definitely makes the gins a lot worse. And since we're not really pushing, um, this is going to be nice because we can take away their ability to block super effectively. So we'll start with the one that they know about. If they have the counter, they've got it. So I guess depending on like what they have, they can probably they can probably block decently well here. Um, I I guess it just depends on if they have something that can get them to like two power. But it's I suppose it's like fairly fairly decent chance that they do. I think given that, do we want to push with Vanguard or not here? I mean like it's representing four damage by being alive, um, just with the Sentinels and the Veterans. So I think, I think I'm gonna hold off and then just push with these two veterans. They can certainly go ahead and take one out and that's fine if they do. Let's start with, I guess, probably Initiate here. Again, we could pump with Adversary, but like, let's just take a turn to play all these cards out. The other thing here is we can also use Sentinel to um to attack through the haughty gym and maybe that's the play but i think playing everything out is okay too even if they kill one it's honestly fine because we still want to be pushing for damage here so i think it's okay All right, that was super good for them. And here I think we wanna give them the option to take out the veteran again. Like we're doing okay on life and we just wanna push damage. So I think we just push all in to see if they wanna block here and that's fine. Okay, looks like they've got March, so they can take out one of our Sun Gold Sentinels, which is annoying, but honestly expected.
Part of me now kind of wants to just like use Sentinel to push through with uh, the um, the hex proof, but I think there's such a gain from getting the adversary going that we just probably just do that instead. Actually, let's hang on. I think we just all in at this point. Yep, that's going to do it. Nice. There it is, Mythic. Let's see where we are in Mythic. Kind of curious. All right, so we're at 99%. Let's do a couple more games here, but yeah, just happy to get there. Feeling good. Hand looks great. Strangle is a bit strange to be seeing from mono red, but I guess it's possible. Certainly a fine card, I just haven't seen it in that deck for a while, so yeah. I guess we're dealing with uh, Rakdos here. Um, I think we just want to get Adeline going. We could do go for Brutal Cathar here, but... I think they've got enough removal in hand that's just not a great play. Not as worried about veteran. I think we just go for Brutal Cathar here just to kind of get it going. Just to kind of start setting up for Knight Errant. It's a little bit underwhelming, but that's okay. Now what's interesting here is if we Brutal Cathar the adversary, do we get it back? I think we might. We could also just go for a big Knight Errant. Um, Knight Errant is probably a little bit better. Getting rid of the lifelike would be nice, but I think that it's just a little bit better to kind of refill our hand here. I guess we can see if they want to trade for maybe like the 1-1. Because um, then we're still using Knight Errant for 3. Yeah, it's like pushing 1 damage. <clears throat> Are we going to like put any more stuff on the table? I think maybe not. So I guess let's just attack for 1. Or wait, no. We need all... Never mind. We need all of our creatures here oh 
also they might have like mass removal here so i don't know if we should go all the way out like this so maybe we shouldn't have played like the initiate but i think we want to get to at least three here But now, even if they've got, like, the board, we have a decent refill. Okay, Ganjo is sweet. So, I guess we hold back with Brutal Cathar, because we kind of want to be able to use that decently well. And then just full push with everything else. That was pretty funny. Nice. Um, yeah, I think there's like, they could have a sweeper here, but I think there's a decent chance they don't. So let's just get Adeline going. Um, the other consideration, I suppose, is they could have like Chandra. But I think we just want to like try to make the best of the time right now and just push as much as we can. We also could have just let this flip again. I suppose that would have been fine. Part of the reason that like I didn't worry about that so much is because we've got the other Brutal Cathar here. All right, now we've got the Aganjo. And the Brutal Cathar. So we'll just... Um... I kind of like using Iganjo. Because if we use Iganjo, then we can get Brutal Cathar to flip again. Um, does that matter? Let's see, if we just Brutal Cathar their Decadent Dragon and push, they block here. They take 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Go to 1. It's not quite lethal. But it's like force blocks, which is pretty good. Um, otherwise, you're pushing a little bit less, but we have our Brutal Cathar in hand, which I kind of like. So yeah, I think we played a little safe here since we can't kill them just in one turn. So I think we just swing out and then we can uh, be Ganjo. Actually, I suppose I could have dropped Thalia and still be able to play Ganjo. But this way we get to flip Brutal Cathar, which I like. That's got to do it. Um, yeah, it doesn't matter. They're just dead. Okay, that works. I can't say enough good things about having four Iganjos. Like, it's just, it feels so good. Always having Iganjo ready. Like, between the Aganjos 
the marches and the brutal cathars we have 11 pieces of removal which is actually a lot in an aggro deck so packing those into your lands feels really good um here we're just going to go hopeful initiate since we've got uh, sun gold sentinel on two and then hopefully adeline on three Not sure what we're up against here. I suppose it could be like the Gruel Get There pump deck, but I feel like this is not the type of land they'd be running, maybe. Either way. Unfortunately, did not have the turn three Adeline, but I guess you can't have it all. What I love about March here is that, like, this gives us the ability to, like, just get rid of something on their turn and then, like, still Adeline this turn. Um, I guess we can't quite because we don't. It'd have to be, like, a two drop, but that's okay. I'll take it. Yeah, now we can just March for three pitching probably thalia here i kind of like having the extra adelines we could also just go for a knight errant instead but i think this is like a really good push so let's just get rid of their also they, they probably want to set up for like fight rigging or something annoying like that to keep the thalia or not yeah, I think the Adeline is just better, honestly. Having a backup, even having a backup copy makes more sense, I think. Okay, got the land. Super happy about that. Feels good. 5-0. and oh. We're already almost in the top 1,200. So, yeah. I really like the changes. I think it's working super well. Let's take a look at the stats. All right, for some reason, I think um, Untapped GG is having trouble loading. But yeah, we are 33 wins and 11 losses, 75% win rate. So feeling really good. And uh, yeah, we will see you here in the next one.